The town and gown issue in Ypsilanti is becoming more apparent than ever. The term town and gown refers to a distinct separation of the university and the city in a college town. Towns like this are often insulated from economic downturns, given that they have a population of students living in and using the resources of that city. Ypsilanti has yet to bridge this gap. Normally, the town expects a return from the students utilizing their resources. They can do this in the way of seeking employment within the town and building up their local businesses, thus promoting the economic growth of the city. But much of EMU does not participate in Ypsilanti's city life. There have been some attempts to facilitate a connection between the university and the city, but little has led to any significant development. Originally a trading post established in 1809 by Gabriel Godfroy, a French-Canadian fur trader from Montreal, a permanent settlement was established on the east side of the Huron River in 1823 by Major Thomas Woodruff. It was incorporated into the territory of Michigan as the village Woodruff's Grove. A separate community a short distance away on the west side of the river was established in 1825 under the name Ypsilanti, after Demetrius Ypsilanti, a hero in the Greek War of Independence. Woodruff's Grove changed its name to Ypsilanti in 1829, the year its namesake effectively won the Greek War, and the two communities eventually merged. In 1853, Michigan State Normal School opened its doors. Later, in 1959, it changed its name to Eastern Michigan University. Between 1959 and 1980, the College of Education, College of Arts and Sciences, Graduate School, College of Business, College of Health and Human Services, and College of Technology were established. In 1853, the student body was 122. In 1960, there were 5,000. In 1970, there were 21,000. And finally, in 1990, Eastern Michigan University achieved its highest student enrollment of 26,000. Our goal is to try to uncover the reasons behind this town and gown gap. What would it take for students to make Ypsilanti their home? What would it take to simply get the students out downtown? We have found that a good number of students hardly step off campus. Is it an issue of safety, or are the students simply uninformed about what Ypsilanti has to offer? We talked to Andrew Hellinga, employee of the Ypsilanti Downtown Development Authority, on the issue. My name is Andrew Hellinga. I am the Community Development Coordinator with the Ypsilanti Downtown Development Authority. Normally in a college university setting, it's almost insulated from economic downturns being that the city will have a stock of um, basic, basically consumers in the student body. These are individuals who will live on and off campus. They will use the shops around there and different eateries. They'll basically it's it's insulated from the outside woes of the economy because it has that stock of people which are going to use those goods and services and the situation in Ypsilanti being that EMU has traditionally been a commuter school is there isn't that populace readily available to use the the goods and services of the city and to date there really hasn't been a large movement to bridge that gap to really try to get the student body to come into Ypsilanti to experience what Ypsilanti has to offer. So there is a lot of progress happening in Ypsilanti but really if, if we really want to stay successful and stay on a positive trajectory we need to start you know bridging that town and gown gap. We need, we need to as a city really kind of harness you know, the resources that we have that is provided by the, the university. And basically to start that, we really just need to have city officials and, you know, university officials sit down together and really kind of hash out a plan and see what can be done to really, you know, find a way to both benefit the city and the university. What students can do is they can get down into the city and use what you know, the, the, the city has to offer. There's quite a few good eateries. There's a lot of great nightlife going on down here. I, when I was in my undergrad at EMU, I never spent any time in Ypsilanti. And I really feel that that was a detriment to my college experience. You know, the, the rise in the student population, yes, is a benefit, but it's getting students down here. It's, it's really kind of 
promoting the area and really having things that students will want and it's really making students feel safe and it's really about improving the city the, the city's image and once you do that and once you kind of bridge that gap and you make people feel safe and you make things that people are going to want to do down here then that's when you start seeing the increase in business and that's when you start to see Ypsilanti really flourish and prosper. Maya Hardy and Noah Polivian, two EMU urban planning alumni, did an experiment to try to understand this gap as well. The experiment revolved around the simple idea of communicating with your community. Maya and Noah posted whiteboards around the town to give Ypsilanti residents a voice. One, located on campus in Strong Hall, posed the open-ended question, I will stay in Ipsy if, encouraging students to write whatever they felt. Some students took the question as you'd imagine some college students would, with some less than admirable responses, answering, if campus wasn't so boring, or if all the squirrels died. Others took the question seriously and gave some thought-provoking answers, such as, if I could find a better job, if Depot Town expanded, if more people would engage downtown Ypsilanti, and if it felt more like a college town. Another question they posted in downtown Ypsilanti was, why are you here today? Some of the answers could be said with any town, while others were more specific to what only Ypsilanti has to offer. Finally, they asked people what buildings they would like to see in Ypsilanti. Most of the responses featured chain restaurants. But a few asked for buildings that could help form a better community. So how much about Ypsilanti do you really know? Did you know that the tiny little Domino's on Cross Street was the first Domino's pizza to exist? Or that the infamous sidetrack restaurant in Depot Town was hit by a train coming off its tracks in 1929? or how the local bar and music venue Woodruff's got its name. Ypsilanti has so much to offer for students. Stop by the historic Depot Town for some incredible food and drinks. Aubrey's is known for their delicious pizza. Upstairs in Aubrey's lies the bar Sticks, filled with pool tables, shuffleboard, and a spin wheel which dictates the drink specials for the night. Right behind Aubrey's and Sticks is the Ypsilanti Farmer's Market, where fresh, delicious produce is sold. Across the street, Sidetrack is famous for their burgers and their drink specials as well. Then there is Woodruff's, known for their music. Local musicians perform regularly at Woodruff's. They hold an open mic night on Tuesdays, and even some famous bands have stopped by to perform acoustic sets at this little Ipsy bar. If you want a more serene night out, you can check out Cafe Ali right next to Woodruff's. Cafe Ali has a vast selection of Michigan-made ice cream and Michigan-brewed beers. If you're the adventurous type, you can try combining them both for their signature beer shakes. If you don't have the wheels to get to Depot Town, there are plenty of unique stores located right across from Ford Hall. The Ugly Mug is an Ypsilanti staple. If you want to stop in for a handcrafted cup of coffee and chat with community members, Ugly Mug is the place to go. They have great events like local art exhibits, acoustic nights, and a coffee lab. Just down the road, Tower Inn boasts some delicious pizza and a generous happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. and 10 to 1 a.m. A few doors down is the Worst Bar, a unique eatery serving some exotic food such as rattlesnake, bison, and alligator. They too have drink specials every night of the week for both beer and liquor drinkers. Or if you're more traditional, there's a Subway and a Sweetwater's Coffee and Tea Shop located a few doors down as well. Ypsilanti may be a small city, but there are clearly many reasons to be proud to call yourself an Ypsilanti resident. We have an interesting history and unique businesses around the city. The town and gallon gap may not be as simple as just promoting local businesses, but while we attend Eastern Michigan University, it is important to explore the city we are in. Visit some of the local stores and see for yourself what privileges lie only in Ypsilanti.